life that she deserves. And on today, I have Betty uh, Fonete. I know I messed that up, Betty, but it, it's like a lot of people mess mine up too. <laughs> She's absolutely amazing. She has been our international Every Girl Wins translator for about two years, right, Betty? And yes. Betty is all about the youth. When last year she awarded, um, she awarded about five or six youths in Haiti that we're doing amazing work. And that's what we do on March the 13th on International Every Girl Wednesday. We honor women and men around the world that has done great things for women and children around the world. And she was honored and blessed to be able to honor so many in her country, Haiti. And we were honored and blessed to have her be able to honor so many. We are absolutely blessed with Betty to be in our translator and she does an amazing work for us. So thank you so much, Betty, for everything that you do for us. Let the, let the listeners know a little bit about you. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Christine, for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be a part of the Every Girls Win Organization Foundation. It's really amazing to see how you are really fighting, advocating for girls around the world. And it's a privilege as a Haitian to be part of this movement to see every girls win everywhere. So about me, I am Betty Fortunat. I am from Haiti. I moved the US in 2007. So 15 years ago, I was really old and an adult when I moved here. And it was a struggle for me to, to adapt not just the country, the culture, the language, so I had to learn everything from scratch. It was, it was really a moment of adaptation for me, but I, I made it. So I'm here for 15 years now, and I am really about the girls, the women, to inspire them, empower them, to really remind them how powerful they are and how blessed they are to be a woman, to empower others and to make sure everyone understand that we have to be the foundation, the, the kind of middle of everything that's going on in the world. We are the one that, that's educated. We are the one that's really stuck with the babies. We are the one who provide the, 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 um, the education they need to be um, what they are today. So we are very important to really get the girls together while they're young so we can empower the world positively, definitely. Yeah, I, I love that. And I love your energy and I love your love, you know, for the youth. And I, and I really saw that last year when you had nominated every awardee was a youth. And we need to empower them because what we know is they are our next generation. And if we don't empower them and let them know that they're doing greatness at a young age, don't wait until they're 50 and 60 to honor them. Honor them right now and let them know how great that they are the work that they're doing because you know them working for humanity is you know is absolutely incredible at such a young age and and you know we you teach them young award them young you know it will continue being you know uh, following them and they'll continue doing great work their whole entire life well Betty you wanted to speak today on education um, and why is education so important to you I mean, for me, education is the key to success, is the key to a brighter future. Without education, we cannot accomplish much. I mean, it's any aspect of your life, education play a major part. Spiritually, if you don't know your Bible, don't know the rules, don't know the past, the history, you won't be able to apply the, the, the principle in your life. If you are in finance, you don't have the, the education to understand how money works, how budget works, to understand retirement principles, you will not be able to be successful, to be wealth. So anything you do, even in, at home, you try to cook a meal for your family, you have to understand how to put the meal together. It takes education to learn how to cook. So anything mm -hmm. we do, we have a learning process we go through, and that's education. It can be self-education, it can be formal education, but we take education to do everything in our lives. So education is the, is the, is the root of what we do. So we need to really take some time to understand how we are really promoting education in our kids, our youth, or our adult life, because that's what we need to be successful in anything we do in life. 
Mm, that's that's really good. There was um, I read a quote one time where it states with like education. Can you imagine not being educated and in your mind you have no doors or windows of what's happening on the outside because you're not educated into in what what you know what what's going on you know in the world and you're right cooking i mean you know a cake box you've got to know how to read the instructions on the cake box to be able to to make the cake you know or you know the recipe from your grandmother that's passed down from generation to generation you know to be able to do that but that's really great so i'm going to let you you speak you know uh, about you know the education in Haiti and, you know, what's going on with the girl child and the education and, you know, what is needed and, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and let you speak and, you know, um, and, you know, let the world know what's going on. Uh, thank you so much for education in general, I mean, in the world, I think is very important. And in Haiti specifically, education plays a good, I mean, major role in, in, the, in the country right now, what's going on right now, what's been going on in the past. Education is a major cause, you know, of lack of it can really, I mean, show that how our people don't know what, how to react socially. Because education is not just about going to school. Going to school is getting the formation that you need to maybe learn how to read and how to um, do your math and science and stuff. But education is more, to me, at the um, household level. It's how you teach your kids the right from wrong. It's how you teach them the value of their society, how you teach them how to advocate for their country, how to learn how to love their country, how to behave in society, how to maybe hold the door for a woman, how to behave in society. That's, that's education. It starts at home, you know, and the school can add to it, of course, and the school will allow you to give you more as your formation, academic for formation, but education is really at home. And what's going on really right now in Haiti, for if I want to speak from the beginning, from the past, in Haiti, we take pride in our education. Our ancestors, our, my great grandmother, my great grandparents, and my parents, they took pride in educating their, their kids. And we have some great, great, great memories. The culture itself show how Haitian really have, we have our own, you know, um, set of memories, set of games, set of um, um, behaviors, manners, that, uh, that is really, um, that we own, and we kind of teach, pass to our next generation, and we, as, as a community, hold on to that so we can be stronger. Now, remember maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago, how if you were misbehaving on the street, any adult could whoop you. That's not your parents. Anyone who is older than you mm -hmm. has the, um, the privilege, has the authority to discipline you, basically because the discipline can, can come from anyone, any adult. And as kids, we had a lot of respect for, for, for the elderly, for the adults, for our parents specifically. That was key. And I think that growing up, that makes a huge difference on how we behaved back then and how the kids today behave. Because the lack of education creates a lack of respect for others, a lot of respect for our country, a lot of respect for themselves, and therefore they do anything. Because if there is no respect for, for self or for others, the one next to you, for the country, then you will not be able to choose right from wrong. When someone going to come to you to offer you $1,000, $100 to do something to destroy your, your community, you'll do it because you don't know any better. You don't, you don't have any, any value of how to respect or, or what, what is worth to have a strong um, 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 country. That's why it's really important to really educate from, from the cradle, because if they don't know anything, they will be easily to be influenced by others, and they will be able to do whatever else someone will push them to do. And that's why I think that education in Haiti, I think it's, there's a lack of it now, because mainly of, of the violence that's going on, and mainly because of the way that uh, all the most of the Haitians who are maybe um, qualified or who have the the original culture of education are are um, elsewhere, 
they are no longer in the country. A lot of Haitians who are educated left the country, not by choice, but because they had to for their own security. Therefore, the few of them who are still there are maybe hiding or don't feel safe to vocalize their culture, they go with the flow. And I think that that's a problem that needs to be addressed where we need to come together as one to even educate. Now with the power of technology, it might be easier to empower the youth to show them what Haiti used to be and influence their mentality to their mindset to do, to do better. I know it's, it might well not be easy to do because in Haiti, we do have a lack of um, a lack of technology. Power is not so stable and it, be not, it will not be easy for, for our girls or youth to, to access it. So it will be a challenge to even reach out to them because they don't have that same um, opportunity to have power 24 seven or to have a computer at their and uh, disponibility to use whenever they, they want to use it. So it will take extra stretch to make it happen, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. So as far as the education piece, I can say that we have a lot of work to do because our kids now, the, young, the ones that are able to access the internet, they're letting themselves influenced by what's going on elsewhere. They are more European, they are more American, they are more African, anything else than, than what they, they're supposed to be. So I think mm -hmm. that there's a lack of, um, of um, originality and that's why they are looking for themselves elsewhere. And I think um, education really can help with that because if you don't know who you are, it'll be hard to fight for what's best for you. So mm -hmm. it starts there, understand your, your past and understand where you are and to know where you're going. And we have a problem with that. And a lot of Haitians, a lot of youth, um, they don't know who they are. They don't even know their history. They don't know where they come from. They don't know the value of what they have. Therefore, they are willing to let you go because they don't know what they have. Mm -hmm. If you don't know you are sitting on a mine of gold, someone might come to you and say, hey, this chair you have, I'll give you $5 for the chair. You say, oh, please take it, I need $5. But nobody told you that the chair is golden. They didn't mm -hmm. know that, so of course, Without that value, that knowledge, you will give it away for nothing. And that's right. the main problem. So we don't know the value. We don't know what our ancestors did in 1804. What was the price we paid to be the first free country in the nation, I mean, in the world. So that's something big. And I think that's something that a lot of countries are jealous of. And that's why they don't have no interest in seeing Haiti getting better. No, no desire to see Haiti improving because they um, have a lot of in, I mean, economic interest, advantage of seeing Haiti struggle like they are, like we are now. And that's why there is nothing being done by anyone to help because by us staying in where we are with lack of, of education, it benefits so many people, so many other parties that is best for everybody to just keep winning and let Haiti you know, go down. And I think that's why education is so important that we as the, as the community, as Haitian or as anyone else who's willing to help, to help educate. If you educate, and that's, that's the base of everything else. Everything else will shift by education. But it might be hard to do now because the, the kind of, the corruption may be so high that now you will need to maybe have some kind of money because when you have someone who's struggling to eat, don't know where their next meal will come from, and they have someone else handing them one dollar per day to eat, mm. hard not to come to that person and say, "Hey, I'm going to educate you on your value." And now, but they are hungry, they cannot even eat, so they will be, you know, um, they will be able, they will not be able to easily listen to you because they have a need that you cannot fulfill because mm -hmm. the, right now they are they are hungry. If you can provide them that, that bread to, you know, to appease their hunger, then they will not be willing to listen or to act on what you are saying. Mm -hmm. like we have a, that problem, will that's huge. And it's sad to say and to see how now with the um, violence climate going on right now, I've seen some more young, young men um, being engaged to do these things. Like they might be 13 or 14. They are teenagers, I mean, kids being, you know, um, brainwashed to do um, violence, you know, um, act. So because they don't know any better, that's what they are, they are being trained to do. Education mm -hmm. can save the country in any shape or form. 
So um, education definitely should be the way to go. And it's taught, like I say, at home to mm-hmm. show the value of the country, the value of their independence, the value of what they have, what they are sitting on. I mean, this country is an organic um, all the way. I know people who are dealing with maybe cancers here or the disease, they were sent to Haiti by their physician for treatment, which is the most organic place you can be. Our food comes from the tree directly with no um, chemical a- added to it. So we eat the healthiest food there is. So it's the best place to be, right. but we can be there because there is a problem where someone somewhere is preventing us from understanding our own value. And it's mm-hmm. a sophistication to change that mindset. So wow. I think that um, it will start home, of course. And when you take it from, from the home and you, you take it to the schools and now the should continue with that to show, um, to show everyone, the youth and the girls, how to protect their, their, patri- their, their patrimony and how to love their country and themselves. And unfortunately, the school, there is not enough of that neither. So the school mm-hmm. system, 90% of the schools are private and private schools are not free. Mm. Public schools are designed to, to serve mm-hmm. and unfortunately we don't have enough of those. Maybe have 10 percent or less of public school that explain how uh, the, 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 the adults, the, the families, the, the, the families, the households cannot afford sometimes to send their kids to school because they don't have the money to pay the, the monthly you know, tuition for schools. It's not mm-hmm. always free and they are expensive. They have to wear uniforms, they have to buy the books, they have to buy the supplies and it's not mm-hmm. easy to get both food and school <laughs> tuition. Mm. And that's why a lot of kids cannot go to school. And if a family have maybe, they let's say the families, they have four or five kids, they have three girls and two boys, and they must send some of them to school. And school is so expensive because it's private. They have to send the boys. Boys get priority because they can afford to send everybody. Mm. Therefore, the girls stay home to help the, with the household cleaning, to cook. And the mm. boys go, but they have to choose that they can afford this on everyone because they don't have the, the, the economic power to do so. And that's what impacting our girls. And that's what the latest um, report I was reading last week shows that in Haiti currently in 2010, after the earthquake, we have 64% of male going to school and only 57% of girls. So to oh, see wow. there, there's a lesser amount of girls mm-hmm. exposed to, to schools because most of the time, the parents have to choose between who can go. It's not always um, a willing decision. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes what they can afford to do. Mm. I think that that's where it should start with really it's a lot of um, places we can start with the education, with maybe creating more jobs or ways for them to be able to get the economic power back because if you cannot afford to send your, your, your kids to school, if you can just send one, you might choose the oldest or the boys, the males. But you think the males, if they go, they can come back and educate the girls. Because the girls, yeah, they are girls. They're not that important because they are girls. They have the second choice, pretty much. And, and one way to solve that could be to create more public school. And you know, and unfortunately, I don't have the means and money to create public school. But if we could have, you know, a, a, some a movement to increase our public school, would be it would help because that will allow more families to send their kids, boys and girls to school. But with not having that just 10%, you know, we must, there are some villages that have no schools at all. I mean, none. And this is private, you have to pay the price. If you can't pay them, you can just stay home. And that's why I think there's a lack of education and because of lack of education, they don't know how to appreciate what they have. They just don't know. What you don't know can kill you. Now I just power. So it's not their fault in a way because they were not taught to do any better. So whatever comes their way, they're not get the flow. And that's the real issue in my opinion, is the lack of education from home and a lot of school, public school to allow their parents to send their kids to, to school. And, um, and they will engage in more, in more, I would say, commerce activities because they can't go to school. The parents might be um, having, they might open some kind of boutiques. They might open some kind of um, you know, business um, clothing line 
and they are involving the kids. The kids are doing that since they are small, they are youth, they are young, or they are teenagers. So we have a lot of parents or families who are entrepreneurs, not by choice, but by force, because that's the only thing they can do to survive. You know, so I think that it's, it's a huge problem that is complicated to resolve because you cannot resolve education in itself without touching the economy, the politics, the, so, the social problems. It's all um, interconnected in a way because education in itself is not, it's not the problem that is standing alone. It's really um, impacted by other you know, um, situations like I mentioned earlier. You have to resolve the economy. You have to create more public school, maybe more jobs to allow the parents to pay the private school or create more public school to allow them to send their, their, their kids to school for free, right? So either way, we'll, we'll help more, more girls to go to school. And with the girls not, not able to go to school, they allow them to stay home or if they allow them to just go to the uh, market to sell mm -hmm. merchandises, foods, producers, and that's all they do. And when they grow up, they have their own kids, they keep it going. They keep the same legacy. <laughs> they just send the boys to school and they, the girls go with them to the market. They clean, they cook, and the kids keep going. And it's a, it seems like to me, uh, Betty, it's a cycle. That it's just, cycle. yeah, that, that you sounds like to me, it's, it's a cycle of girls stay home, school. And that when you were talking earlier about, you know, and what I like about this is, is when you came here, I was thinking you were going to talk about education, like math ABCs, right? And you're talking about something totally different, which I love, is educating with the culture. I, and, you know, if we can continue educating, you know, the culture and starting at home, you know, and for me, you know, what I tell, you know, a lot of people, school is, is not all about math and it's not all about, you know, reading and writing it's also about social skills and that goes also back to you know to you know to to the home of the social skills but I also think when kids are in school they're also able to socialize with other kids that are their age and that's also how they learn Absolutely. What's your, yes what's your thoughts on that Yes, but I think that, like I was saying earlier, education is not what we learn in school. Mm -hmm. What we learn in school, school is mainly to show you how to write, how to read, how mm -hmm. to get your math, how to count. And that can be learned anywhere. You can get the right. software, YouTube, you can get anything to learn how to read, but you can learn, you can know how to read properly. Mm -hmm. You can count from one to thousand, but you're not educated. But you can have right. a whole different level of behavior, the way you respect the ones next to you, the way you you treat your your spouse, your kids, your friends, mm -hmm. the way you are I mean, when you're driving, do you have what ways? Education is more than just knowing how to count, read, and write. Mm -hmm. So when you say when you say education in Haiti, I see more about you know the families, how do they act and, and, and behave? How do my my people go on the street for nothing to destroy things they, they we had we we had to spend money and energy to build. It's an education problem mm -hmm. because they don't yeah. know what we what we have. So it's not necessarily they don't go to school. School is one problem by itself, but the education piece from home is major. It's even more important because if we have that. You know, then you may, I might not be able to know how to read, but if you have that education to understand the value of what you have, then nobody could use you to destroy mm -hmm. your own home. Mm, yeah. You yes. have that love for your country. It doesn't matter if you can read or not. If you mm -hmm. love your country, you will fight for it. Right. It doesn't matter if you can read what they're saying. So I think that it starts there. It starts with educating, educating mm -hmm. by not school. And, and the right is important to know how to write, don't get me wrong. You need to know how to write and read. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the formation piece of it. And that's when you have to, to send them to school or homeschool them to, to learn these things. Mm -hmm. But that's why COVID-19 showed us something really cool. So now with COVID-19, we had to be quarantined for two years, right? Right. A yes. lot of kids were homeschooled. So mm -hmm. school at home. So there was, a, there was a, a merger between education and information. So mm -hmm. there was the school itself is not where the kids should learn how to say, please, thank you, good morning. It starts home. Yes. You yes. know, it's home and that's education. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's it's the, 
Yeah, so we were talking about earlier about the, you know, the cycle, right? It, you know, it just seems like a cycle. How would you say that to start, how to fix that cycle? The cycle should start, I mean, to break that cycle, we should go back and from, from the basics and educate um, our our families, our women, our, our, our dad, mom and dad, because if we don't do that, we will not be able to build the cycle. We start with me, with other people, with you, with what you're doing to mm -hmm. create awareness that we have a problem mm -hmm. and empower people to help change that mindset. It's a mindset that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. And some of some of the cities in the country, I think they, they have, they start, you know, um, understanding the value of education, but a lot of places still behind. It will take more than one person to go back and to influence or empower these people to change the mindset. Mm -hmm. really is the mindset issue because in their mind is the way it's been going for years and it's okay but if yeah. you go back and change the mindset and have them understand that it's not okay and there is a better way to do the same thing and they might be willing to listen and change behavior mm -hmm. they will start with empowering with some some kind of um, community actions some kind of maybe coaching program virtual but again they can attend those things they don't have the electricity to, to even right. connect to nothing or they don't have um, the device a laptop or a smartphone to do it so a smartphone mm -hmm. or a laptop would be a lux for some people in the country you know if they're in the main right. city they can afford it but if they are in the urban areas it's lux for them so mm -hmm. how are we going to empower them and change their minds if they can't listen to you Maybe right. it's hard for me to go there, to travel there physically, but if I had a way to be on a Zoom like this and talk to them, it would make a difference. But I can't because they cannot um, access that, you know, anytime. So mm -hmm. that's a problem in itself. But I think that to answer your question, the way to break the cycle is to get into their mind and revert that mindset so mm -hmm. that behavior can change. Yeah, and then you, and then uh, one of the part was talking about you were talking about um, you know poverty as in, you know, um, it, it to me it, it's it's kind of like you know Africa when I go into and travel to Africa a lot there that you know there is more of the day to day basics that they're worried more about than they are you know the the math the reading and things like that. And Absolutely. you know that's under and that's very understandable. I mean, because you know it's an everyday survival, everyday survival. Yes. But I want to say here, Dr. Christine, that Haiti um, is known for a poor country, but mm -hmm. it's not a poor country. We are not poor. We are mm -hmm. a rich country because mm -hmm. we used to produce the best producer of coffee in, in the world. We have the wow. best coffee, the best rice there is. It's mm. a matter of education to show, right. to teach our people that we have that in the land. Let's cultivate that and let's export. it. We have it, you know, we have it growing like, like crazy. We have mm -hmm. coffee, uh, the, the best, uh, I know people who are exporting coffee right now to sell to Starbucks. So, Starbucks. Oh, wow. so wow. we have the best coffee, the best yeah. rice you can imagine, mm -hmm. natural, organic. So we're not a poor country. We just don't know how to maximize our resources. They are there. So it's not about poor countries. And Haiti is not one of them. Right, right. It's, it's, more, of a, it's I'm sorry. more of the. It's more of maybe of the capacity building in the people to get yep. them to understand how rich their country is. It is exactly. and how, rich, how rich they are. Yes. Exactly. So we have a lack of resources, a lack of um, understanding on how to leverage our resources, but we are not a poor country. We have resources, we have gold, we have um, the, the, the rice, the coffee, I mean, the, 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 the cacao. So that's what we are known for. In the past, we are the men, the men producer of coffee in the entire world. And wow. we still have the coffee, that doesn't change. Just we don't have, we have a lack of education. Right. Or a lack of, you know, um, um, ways to make it happen. But mm -hmm. the poverty in Haiti mm -hmm. is something that I think they put in our mind. If we remove that poverty mindset and believe we are rich, we'll make it yeah. happen. I right. believe we are rich country and it's not mm -hmm. a poor country at all. It's just what, what they've been saying. And we mm -hmm. believe it enough that we say, yeah, we are poor, we are poor, we're not poor. It is not a poor country at all. We are a rich, rich Caribbean. And we can make it happen if we know the way to do it. Right, exactly. You know, it's it's like you keep you keep putting something in someone's mind and, you know, they believe it. 
And, you know, if it's negative, they're going to continue uh, thinking, you know, it's negative. If it's positive, it's going to be positive. So it's, it's, it's just like you said, it's all in, you know, all in the mindset. Well, at this moment, I'm going to check and see if we have any questions on Facebook real quick before we close. If we have any Whoop. questions on Facebook. Whoops. I'll have to mute myself here. So, um, now we have uh, Damaris. She said, yeah, love it. You will fight for it. And then we have Jean says, science of family relationships begin there. Uh, Jean says, again, empower them to change their mindset. Uh, and then Margie says, blessings. And then um, we have a couple others that, that are watching. But, you know, like they say, it's all, it's in the mindset, um, you know, and anything starts in the mindset. I always say, even waking up in the morning, getting up out of bed, it takes a mindset to get up out of that bed to go and do what you need to do. Do you have any last words or anything that you want to talk about before we end? Well, my last word will be, um, I will thank you first for the opportunity because this month is also Haitian Heritage Month. It's the Pride Month for us on the 18th is the flag day. So that's where our flag was, you know, putting together. So it's a huge day in four days. Um, that would be the, the our flag day. So that's that really, funny. really huge for me to speak about Haiti um, in this month, in this moment in our platform, because it means a lot to me to kind of show the world how Haiti is not how they think. It's a poor mm -hmm. country. We are the richest country you can imagine. The health mm. is there, the resources is there, the gold is there. And we know how a lot of people who know where they are, you know, they take advantage yeah. of that. So we just need to make ourselves aware of what we have and understand mm -hmm. the beauty, the value of our own country mm -hmm. and the gold. So I think that, you know, Haiti is um, the beautiful place. It's the best place to be, but they use our people, they use us to fight against each other so mm. they can you know when you fight your, your your siblings your sisters then the enemy comes come in and, and take over and get what they needed and leave and mm. then they leave your house in disaster that's what's happening so they know what we have they want what we have so bad they find a way to divide us they can come in and get it and go but we mm. need to understand that we are powerful we are strong we made it happen in 1804 so we can mm -hmm. make it happen again. Let's stand together as one in a union to make Haiti the way it was before. Wow, I love that. If you know, and you are right, uh, Betty. Um, like the media and certain people will betray certain countries in a certain way. I've never been to Haiti, but I have been to Africa, and you know, and they still on TV betray Africa in the 1980 commercials. You know, and Africa is a very developed country and very rich. And, you know, I look forward to, you know, visiting Haiti one day. I really do, you know, looking forward to, you know, I love different cultures and I love different foods. So, <laughs> and things like that. But thank you so much, Betty, uh, for, you know, speaking for the girl child today in your country and letting us know, you know, what's going on in the education you know, there, and like you stated, education needs to start at home, and I truly believe that, um, you know, with you know, your morals and your manners and your ethics, I think that that's very, very, very important, and thank you again for being a part of International Every Girl Wins. Um, our organization, you know, is, is growing every year. Uh, we're right now in 26 countries, and, and hopefully next year we'll be in 30 countries. You know, that's my goal for next year. Um, and thank you again, Betty. And I will, and thank you for watching. If you have any questions for Betty, put it in the comments and she'll check it to see, you know, and answer those questions in the comments on Facebook. So thank you again for watching Her Right Conversations with Dr. Christine Kozicek. Thank you.